when our first uh, son was born, Gus, uh, we chose to keep our current house, rent it, and then use cash to buy our next house. So our first long-term rental was our first home. We still own it to this day. And that $175,000 investment is probably worth close to a million um, with very little improvement and maybe two weeks of vacancy over that entire 20 year period. So wow. it's just been one of those. And Austin's not a great cash flow town, um, but like, I think we're almost done paying off the mortgage, right? So it'll about to be a good cash flow property, but we were focused more on the asset growth. And we just set a goal uh, that year of, of owning 10 investment properties and paying them off as fast as we could. And we kind of felt like at the end of that process, we would have somewhere around 75,000 in passive income. And that's what we called our go to hell fund. And I had just interviewed someone that was very upset because of she'd been worked for a very bad boss. And she said, every day I drove to work and I cried in the parking lot before I'd go into work. And it just broke my heart. It's like mm -hmm. they, that she was a single mom and she felt like she was basically a slave. Mm -hmm. Like if she lost her job, she couldn't provide for her kids and she had no other options. Mm -hmm. And that really impacted me. And I just said, how much, I say it's like, no, I mean, this is my wife and I, we were very much partners in this, but I was like, how much would we need, really need in passive income to escape? And at that time, like, I'm not into cars. Like I'm wearing, this shirt is vintage 2012, I think. <laughs> um, I buy clothes, I wear them till they fall apart. You know, I'm like, the, my biggest indulgences are probably food and travel. And uh, we just kind of both been thrifty. I was like, you know, it's not like I'm not going to work unless I'm like incapacitated. I mean, hell, maybe I'll bartend or wait tables and write the great American novel that'll never sell. But if we had 75,000 and we didn't have a lot of debt, we felt like we were free. Mm -hmm. We could walk away from anybody. And so those were our initial goals. And our discoveries were uh, in Austin with appreciation, uh, we could grow our net worth rather rapidly. We were very good at, you know, we'd take the cash flow and pay down the mortgages. I'm sure that we would maybe not do all of that the same. So I'm not, that's not <laughs> advice. That just was our strategy. And um, we were just trying to have this, this was our home base that was just free. That was our free base. I looked it up and I was like, man, the cash flow is happening really slow. We have to start buying businesses. And so the first business is when my wife stopped being a stay-at-home mom, she started a real estate team. Her goal for that first year was 15,000 in income. She was going to be super part-time. She made 85. Wow. That's but because great. it was our second business, right? We were still living on my income as like the primary breadwinner at that time. That was just because there was a lot of our marriage where she made more than me. I just flipped it when she went home to stay with the kids because I was a writer, right? Writers don't normally make money. So we were living on my salary and it had grown because I'd become an executive at that point. I think I was soon to be or almost a VP at that point. But we just said, let's just always live on my salary and everything you earn will use to acquire new investments or pay down debt. And we just kept that balance up. So that first year, like she didn't have a big goal because we didn't need the money. So she had the freedom to just kind of go to work and have fun and be natural. And she made 85 grand. Um, and then she just kept growing that business. And, you know, she now sells over a hundred million and, and she sold over a hundred million in real estate for at least the last five years. Wow. And has a business, right? A multi-city business where she doesn't do a lot of sales anymore. She's just a leader. So that was our first business. But over time, we realized like as our net worth grew, it took us, I think, until uh, I'm looking at my dates, 2012, we started in about 2004. Uh, it took us till about 2012 to get to that quote millionaire status on net worth. Um, but we were lagging on the other goals. But what we started realizing is we just set a goal of, can we make our net worth grow by about 25% every year? And the bigger the number is, the harder it is to make that leap. And we started realizing like, we have to look at like three or four years and we have to start a business today that could hopefully grow up and that was kind of our strategy. That was how we started getting into businesses. Can we acquire one? Can we start a new one? 
can someone who works with us, who's talented, say, look, we'll share everything we've learned. Let's grow this business together. And we've done that a few times as well. But So that's our journey. Like we own a ranch, a house, 10 rental properties, including a short-term rental uh, in Minnesota. So it's not like giant, like the McKissick's or David Osborne style real estate holdings, uh, but it's a big portion of our net worth. And it, uh, it enabled us, right? That as our home base and the security gave us to venture into launching businesses. And we've just been really good and disciplined about, like, I'll start a business, but I can't run it. My money can go there, but I, I have a calling and I have a job and it's right here as an executive. And I write books with Gary Keller and I do, you know, what we do as leaders here. 